Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where an entitled mother tries to drown a child in a swimming pool. This isn't something that happened to me. It's a story my professor told us happened to him. I think this is a true story, but then again, I wasn't there, so I'll let Reddit be the judge of that. I thought it belongs here. I hope to do this story justice. When my professor was in high school, he worked summers as a lifeguard to earn some cash. He has many interesting stories from his time as a lifeguard because many interesting people apparently attend public schools. This pool was divided in half by a lap lane. On the top half of the pool was the shallows with a set of stairs for the kiddies. On the bottom half was a small slide that emptied out into the deep end. In hindsight, this was probably a bad design because it meant the kids would constantly swim through the lap lane to get to the slide and back again. Now, there was this one lady who would frequent the pool. She would always bring a snorkel and flippers and swim the lap lane, as any sane person would do. It's the peak of summer, and the pool is full of kids and their families doing as kids do. Racing each other across the pool, seeing who can hold their breath the longest, flinging water at each other, etc. Along came Karen. Waddling over in her flippers, snorkel peas dangling out of her mouth. She jumped into the pool and began to swim her laps with her flippers and snorkel as every normal person does. Everything's fine for half an hour until my professor spotted Karen rising menacingly from the water like a Loch Ness monster. She stood by the edge of the pool and screams, Get these god dang kids out of my god dang lap lane! My professor being in high school was taken aback by this. He approached her and said, Whoa, dude, this is a family pool. You can't say those things. Karen just glared at him. Mother effer, you had one effing job. Keep these effing kids out of my lap lane. She jumped back into the pool and swims halfway down before being intercepted by some more kids. She whirled back around and screams, This is the one place I can go to get away from my effing kids. I deserve this. Get these effing kids out. My professor asked her to leave the pool due to language. She began to slowly get out of the pool, looking exasperated. You guys know that look people get when they're thinking real hard about something? You can see the gears in their head churning and you know that it won't be good. That was the expression Karen was making as she planned her next move. Karen turned away from the pool, shoved her snorkel back into her mouth and fell backwards into the pool, all while flipping my professor the double bird. Karen began to angrily swim down towards the other end of the pool. My professor could tell how pissed she was by the heavy puffing coming from the snorkel. Puff, puff, puff. Now, there was a group of 6th grade girls by the lap lane. They were supposed to be watching their toddler brother who was paddling around with green floaties. But these are 12-ish year old girls. They're obviously not watching him. They're chatting and playing games as people should be in a public pool. Naturally, the boy scrambles over the lane dividers and yeets himself into the lap lane. Puff, puff. Puff. Karen came huffing down the lane, getting closer and closer to the boy. I personally like to imagine this with the Jaws music playing in the background. Professor knew instantly that this won't be good, but he was on the opposite side of the pool and watched in horror as Karen grabs the boy. The boy's so small that her hands fit around his waist, her fingertips nearly touching along his back. Karen rips the green floaties from this kid's arms and shoves him under the water, holding him there. Have you ever seen a person drowning? Their eyes snap wide, their pupils dilate as they lose control over their actions, causing them to flail wildly, even if they know how to swim. As soon as that kid began to spasm and twist, adrenaline took over. My professor had made saves before, but none like this. With all lifeguard training forgotten, he leapt into the pool, shoved Karen away, and shouted, Get off him! My professor grabbed a hold of this kid and swam him to the shore and hefted him onto the poolside. He called out to his friend and coworker, Lifeguard, get the water out! Because he couldn't for the life of him remember how to administer chest compressions. The rage within Karen subsided, and the heavy feeling of wrongdoing set in. She grew eerily quiet when she realized what she'd done. Professor roared for her to get out of the pool, the police were called, and Karen arrested. I don't know what happened after, but the boy turned out fine. <laughs> this top pose from Eric Crawl. I need to get away from these obnoxious kids. I know, I'll go to a public pool, said no sane person ever. Or even better logic. 
I am so tired of seeing all these obnoxious kids. I know, I'll try to murder one. Well, at least that time she got her wish. There aren't any children in maximum security prisons. Our next Reddit post is from Exorionis. Lots of people seem intrigued by my entitled parents, so here's another one for you. In this one, I'm actually the entitled kid. I know, feel free to roast me. Once a year when I was younger, my parents used to take us all on a trip to Puerto Rico where we'd stay in these fine resorts on the beach. I was reminiscing on these trips earlier with my husband and remembered the free secret pools my mom used to take us to, only to realize what the deal really was with them. One specific story in particular comes to mind about the secret pools. I had to be about seven or so at the time. My cousins were on the trip with me and were roughly about my age. When the sun beat down too much, the sand got annoying and we were all crying and cranky. We'd visit the secret pools. My mom used to lead us up all these paths around big beach houses. She would go up to some and check the gates. If it was locked, we kept going. Finally, one was open and she went in first to check if anyone was in. She called us in, where a big infinity style pool and hot tub awaited us in a gorgeous backyard. We were told to jump in and have fun, which we all did without asking questions. About 15 to 20 minutes later, someone appears at the back door. The following conversation goes down in Spanish, so I'll translate roughly in English. Remember, I'm unfortunately entitled kid one in this story. The owner says, Uh, who are you and what are you doing on my property? The kids are just playing and cooling up. We won't be long. No, I don't know you. How did you get in here? You left the gate open. We were walking by and my kids saw your pool. Yeah, that's not okay. Please leave. What? We're on vacation. You left your gate open. It's completely legal for us to be in here because it's on the beach and it's public. We're visiting your country anyway, so we should feel welcome by the locals. Just let the kids play. I'm afraid I can't. Please get off my private property. No, just five more minutes, please. The resort's pool is far away and is way too full. I'll call the police if you don't leave. Ugh, fine. Entitled kids, we need to leave. Come on. Five more minutes. No, this mean lady says we need to leave. Both the entitled kids start crying. See what you've done. You don't know how hard it is with kids on vacation. I have two kids and that is not my problem. Both entitled kids get out in a huff. Entitled Kid 2 turns to the owner. Can I have a snack? It's the least you can do. What? No, I can get you some water, but... I want a sandwich! My mom glares at the owner as she leads the Entitled Kids away. <laughs> You're disgusting! For years, I still didn't understand and would ask about the secret pools whenever we went. After doing it maybe once or twice again in other places, my mom claimed she had no idea about these secret pools and told me to stop talking about them. After over a decade, I remembered these pools and had the realization of what was really going on. Oof. Well, OP, don't be too hard on yourself. I don't know if I would call you an entitled kid because you were way too young to understand what was going on. <laughs> your mom though, your mom is a piece of work. Maybe one of the reasons why you always vacation in Puerto Rico is because everyone has guns in America. And if she had tried that in the States, it might have gone a lot worse. Our next Reddit post is from Nanny Lynn. My hobby used to be making quilts from vintage cloth. I would buy the cloth, usually flower and bead print sacks from the 30s and 40s at flea markets and antique stores. I pieced them by hand and sewed the squares together on my old treadle sewing machine. Then I would hand quilt the tops using vintage blankets as batting and older cotton thread. This took a lot of time, but the end results were beautiful and heirloom quality. Besides, it was a lot of fun. One year, I made such a quilt for my brother-in-law's birthday. My husband's younger brother. He and my wife freaked out over it and thanked me profusely. Two days later, my mother-in-law walked into my house without even knocking. Her reasoning was that it was her son's house, and therefore her right to do so. I'd been super busy all day and had just sat down on the living room floor to play Super Mario Kart with my boys. I was surprised to see her. She usually avoided me if my husband wasn't around. She snorted at me when she saw me on the floor and asked me if this is what I did all day and then added that it must be nice to have so much free time. I've always worked from home. You would be surprised at how many people think that this isn't a real job. Then she dumped a bunch of fabric swatches out of a bag onto my sofa. 
Before I could ask her what she was doing, she started telling me that she wanted a quilt like the one I made for my brother-in-law. But she needed hers to be bigger and with these colors. Oh, and she wanted new cloth, not that oh junk. She brought these swatches so I would know what to buy for her quilt. At first, I was too stunned to speak up. Then, I was too angry to trust my mouth. My two boys never liked this woman and they scrambled to their feet and ran out of the room. I envied them for this because I was stuck facing this cow alone. This woman had always been as awful to me as she could. She told my boys to their little faces that they were not her grandsons because they looked nothing like her son. She told her other grandkids this too, so we weren't singled out. She told all of her five sons that she would only recognize her daughter's kids because she knew those were her grandkids. She only claimed the other grandkids as hers when she wanted to look good around other people. This woman had tried to fix my husband up with other women for five years after we were married. This woman, who had been trying to make me freak out for the past 18 years, was so entitled that she thought I should do all this work for her for free. So I looked through the swatches, asked for the dimension she wanted as well as the block pattern, thought for a few moments, then told her, yeah, I can do all that for about $5,000. I figured that this was a large enough sum to freak her out and make her go away. If not, well, sure, I'll make her a quilt for that stupid amount. $5,000? But you just gave one to your brother-in-law? That was a birthday present. Well, then this can be my birthday present. I've never given you a birthday present. The only time I tried to, you handed it back unopened. You told me that you only accepted gifts from family or friends and that I was neither. $5,000. Up front or no quilt. Frowning and pressing her lips together, she gathered up her stupid swatches and left. I opened the door for her and held it so she couldn't slam it. She was a slammer. As I watched her drive away, I couldn't help but think about how much fun that had been. So for the rest of the year, my husband's other three brothers got quilts for their birthdays. Also, to add insult to injury, I made them out of new cloth and not that old junk, as well as the colors and patterns my mother-in-law wanted because I knew it would get back to her that I had done this. That crazy woman tried as hard as she could to guilt one of her sons into giving her their quilt. Nope, didn't happen. Our next Reddit post is from Mom of Three Dragons. This happened yesterday. My three-year-old daughter was diagnosed with bacterial pneumonia and we ended up in an emergency room because she was struggling to breathe. Pneumonia is very serious. She was put on a nebulizer in O2 and given an IV for more meds while we waited for a room to open up in the pediatric intensive care unit. The emergency room was pretty full. The rooms are small and you share them. There's a curtain that divides them. There are no doors, just another curtain. Around 4 p.m., a family arrives with mom, dad, and a five-year-old daughter. The mom briefly looks in on my side of the room and could see my toddler laying in the bed hooked to machines with an IV. It's obvious that this isn't a stub toe. So I can't help but hear the parents explaining why their kids are in the emergency department. Stomach pain. Meanwhile, the kid is asking for something to eat. She sounds quite perky. Parents insist she has a kidney infection. Whatever, I don't know her history, not interested. So my daughter was given a steroid through a nebulizer to help open her airways. Her O2, which they wanted 90 or above, kept dipping down into the low 80s, making an alarm sound. The nebulizer makes some noise, and the side effect is hyperactivity, so my extremely sick kid was medically wired as hell. Within 30 minutes of arriving, the entitled parents call for a nurse and ask for a private room because their daughter needs to rest somewhere quiet. Meanwhile, their daughter was blasting Ryan's toy review from her tablet and loudly demanding chocolate chip cookies and milk. The nurse explains that there are no private rooms in the emergency department. My daughter then starts having a coughing fit, which is scary as her O2 drops off and she chokes until she vomits. I had two nurses in, trying to help by suctioning her and patting her back. I'm trying to help her. My daughter is turning blue. I hear the entitled mother ask the nurse, How long are they going to be expected to listen to that? Afterwards, my daughter was wiped out and was crying a little, and the entitled mom rang for her nurse again and asked again for someplace quiet so her little girl can rest. Her daughter was making a lot of noise playing with something. Then, they started playing with the lights. The room has a switch to control the lights on each side, and then a master switch to cut all the lights. 
My daughter is afraid of the dark. The entitled dad cuts the lights for the room, making it quite dark with the curtain over the doorway drawn. I tell my husband to turn on the lights on our side, which he does. The entitled mom calls her nurse to complain that it's too bright for her little girl to sleep. It's 5 p.m. The nurse explained that they're welcome to shut the lights off on their side, but they have to leave our side alone. They complain a bit about how ill their daughter is. Meanwhile, my daughter is drowning in her own lungs, which I'm sure they know as you can hear everything. The nurse leaves, and they shut the lights off for the entire room again. My husband immediately turns ours on and calls her the curtain that we need our lights on. Silence. Our nurse comes in to attend to my daughter's IV, and they attempt to get her to force us to have the lights off. Our nurse basically tells them to knock it off. Then, they start pushing for more space. They attempt to push our chair away where my husband is sitting. They put their chair way over on our side of the room, pushing the curtain into our faces essentially. My husband pushes it back. They call and complain, rants and repeat. Finally, a room in the pediatric intensive care unit opens up and we're told that we would be admitted in about an hour. The entitled parents complain that they asked for a private room first. The nurse explains that we're being admitted, not being given a private room in the emergency department. The entitled parents demand they be admitted first because their daughter is so much sicker. The nurse says that there's no reason for their daughter to be admitted as she's just constipated and as soon as she poops, they'll be free to go. The parents start freaking out. So that's my story of how the parents of a little girl who needed to take a dump felt they were more important than a little girl with pneumonia. Edit, my daughter is doing much better. Thanks for all the well wishes. Then we have this contribution from Sumo Ninja down in the comments. Genetic constipation? The entitled parents are full of sh**. Just makes sense the kid is too. That was r slash entitled parents and unless you want me to send an entitled parent after you to drown you the next time you're in a shower, then you'd better hit that subscribe button.